Hey, uh, ten. It's my birthday present to you. Thanks, Bobby. Twenty-five fucking years. Oh. oh. I know. Unfucking believable. Hey, happy birthday to you. That's a seat shot for you. Sunday, January tenth, nineteen ninety-nine. It's my last Sunday dinner here. That's what's going on. America met its new family, and TV changed forever. Also born that Sunday was an obsession of my own, but this isn't about me, it's about the family. Believe it or not, the world doesn't revolve around you. Which is exactly why I deferred to another expert on the genre, this guy. Longtime crime reporter and podcast host of Mob Scene from Philly.com, George Anastasia. Oh yeah, I remember that picture of Albert Anastasia lying there all amicable on the barbershop floor. Co-wrote the ultimate book of gangster movies featuring the 100 greatest gangster films of all time. Oh, with a forward by Donnie Brasco. Forget about it. F forget about it. As always, smash that like button, hit subscribe for more videos like this here on GMTV, gangster movies and television, mob news, mob history, all things organized crime. If it is organized, if it is crime, we're gonna talk about it. Knowing the book is from 2011, before even opening it, opening up the books for you. I was wondering how the most important non-movie gangster movie was going to be acknowledged. And it was Sopranos who made that slogan the absolute truth. What do you mean? It's not TV. What's the difference? Big difference. It's HB. Oh! But it's also not a movie. It's not you. It's a TV program. Rather, it's a collection of 86 gangster movies compiled and serialized into TV greatness. Not TV. It's not that simple. Groundbreaking TV greatness. Medium-changing greatness. Oh! You get it. And as Anastasia says in his ultimate book, watching the movies in this book can often feel like going to a Sopranos family reunion. So, for our 25th reunion, we're gonna use Anastasia's six degrees of Sopranos separation and, confusingly, give you the top five gangster movies with the most Sopranos. <laughs> Anastasia listed 32 actors from The Sopranos that have appeared in his own top 100 list. So, for our own list, we're gonna look at the movies with the highest quantity of Sopranos actors. Hey, we want as many Sopranos as we can get. All right, enough fucking rules here, let's get to it. We have four movies that all tied with two Sopranos each. Five. Hi. <laughs> no better place to start than with Tony Soprano himself. Lately, I'm getting the feeling that I came in at the end. With two Sopranos each, we got True Romance, Carlito's Way, A Bronx Tale, and Kill the Irishman. 1993's True Romance has James Gandolfini and John Cenatiempo, who plays Anthony Maffei. Gandolfini had less than 10 minutes of total screen time. <laughs> Alabama, where's our coke and uh, where's Clarence? When's he coming back? And the unforgettable fight with Patricia Arquette was only three minutes. <laughs> All right. No more Mr. F nice guy. <laughs> And our final fun fact for True Romance, the script was written by an up-and-coming Quentin Tarantino. One of the few films Tarantino would ever write, yet not direct himself. All right. As True Romance was directed by Tony Scott. All right. Next for number five, with two total Sopranos. You ready? Here come the pain! Carlito's Way, with Vinny Pastor, a.k.a. Big Pussy Bumpin' Cero. How much shit you give him? A lot. Jesus, push and that terrifying hitman at the end was Joe Saravo, who plays Tony's father, Johnny Soprano, in the flashback episodes. In a world called the Bronx. A Bronx Tale is a tale of two Sopranos with Lilo Brancato and the great Narducci, Catherine Narducci. So Cologero was Matt Bevilacqua. Don't you just take it easy, will you? We just want to talk to you. And his mother. Bobby! Bobby, please, Tony, please! was Charmaine Bucco, one of the few characters in the show who was not, in some way, corrupt. What's your fucking problem? All these years I sat here and I kept my mouth shut. I don't want you and your boys coming in here. And finally, for number five, it's Kill the Irishman, with two Sopranos each. We got Larry Berets and Bobby Bacala, played by Tony Darrow and Steve Sharippa, respectively. Sharippa had a much bigger part than Darrow, but it was great to see them both, as always. Not that it always ends up well for either of these guys. Larry! Pull the fuck 
fucking lawyer. All right, I'm not fucking around. Coming in at number four might feel like a bit of a cheat. But being the gangster movie nerd I am, I did catch a slight error in Anastasia's list here. Steve Sharippa is not under his list for Casino. It's a tiny part, it's uncredited. But he technically plays man in bar in Casino, even according to IMDb. Yeah, that's my pen. Oh, it's a nice pen, I just knows it wasn't, but it was yours, I didn't want it to be. So my compromise here is that Casino comes in at number four with 2.5 Sopranos. Again, it may feel like a bit of a cheat to have half a bacala. Half a fucking tray in there. I was hungry. Son of a bitch. I think it's time for you to start to seriously consider salads. But he was still in Casino, so he makes it as a half. Anyway, we all know who Mr. Point Five is. So, who are the other two in Casino? We got Paul Herman and Frank Vincent. Beansy Gata. I'll step up. And the infamous Philip Leotardo, longtime Lubertazzi captain. Let me tell you a couple of three things. Neither of these guys had the best of luck with SUVs. <laughs> But they were great in Casino and Sopranos. In a show like Sopranos, hyper-focused. Let's get back to that gabagool. On a main character who himself is a murdering crime boss. We just want to talk to you. It's not easy to fill the shoes of quote unquote, the bad guy, the villain, but mission can accomplish. You're a fucking disgrace. <laughs> to the late, great Frank Vincent. That's one bad motherfucker. Hey, remember that episode in season two where John Favreau plays himself making a movie in New York? You don't like bitch? Well, it seems Fabs did too, since he put three Sopranos of his own in 2001's Made. And speaking of three... Let me tell you a couple of three things. Three. Made gets tied with Pope of Greenwich Village at number three for three Sopranos each. Back to Made. Bukiak. Written and directed by John Favreau, we get some more Pastor <laughs> with Vinnie Pastor. Then we get Adriana and Fudio. How you doing, Fudio? Fudio. Drea De Matteo and Federico Castelluccio join Favreau to get made in this mob adjacent crime comedy. Vinnie Pastor has the biggest part out of the three as the driver for Vince Vaughn and Favs. Furio fittingly plays a tough but charming doorman at a club. I see you here again. I'm gonna crack your head. <laughs> And then Adriana almost smokes a joint with John Favreau. That is until Vince Vaughn ruins it for the gang, just like the rest of the movie. Vince Vaughn is so cute. So Charlie! Now a 40-year-old movie, we got 1984's The Pope of Greenwich Village. This was a tough one for our list here because, like Casino, it seems Anastasia left out some Sopranos. At first I thought he might not be including cameos or little parts like Bacala's Man and Bar, but then I double checked the book, Stop asking fucking questions. and Anastasia does clearly stipulate each actor has to appear in at least five Sopranos episodes. A five graph, anybody brings me these thieves. So for the Pope of Greenwich Village, here's your disclaimer as to why Burt Young, AKA Old Man Bacala, doesn't make our list. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, I want that all over the street. Back to Greenwich Village, we got Paul Herman and Frank Vincent, and then- In New York, the only old style boss still in place is Carmine Lupertazzi. Played by Tony Lip. Tony Lip has only a few lines as Frankie, one of the guys in the mobbed up social club. Frank Vincent has a part so small he's credited as first crew chief, but without first crew chief, we would never have gotten this. Charlie! Since it was Frank Vincent who takes. Paul Herman shows up a few times, most notably the stickball scene in the park. Any more mommy rock? No, Mr. Please, please, no more! I'm an artist! And I won't change a word of my play to pander to some commercial Broadway audience. 
Now let me tell you something. Ever closer to number one, number two brings us Bullets Over Broadway. What type of firm is it, Nick? Directed and co-written by Woody Allen, we get our second Sopranos-filled gangster comedy with five fucking Sopranos. 2024 marks 30 years since Bullets Over Broadway. To be an artist is a gift that you're born with or not born with. Premiering in 1994, kids. And aside from the five actors we're hitting for our list, the rest of Bullet's cast is just as star-studded as our list of Sopranos. Don't speak, don't speak, no. We got the godmother herself, Edie Falco, as Carmela Soprano. Hi, Hi Sister Lorna. Nice to see you again. Hello. Then we got Paul Herman's Beansy, Tony Darrow. Or not to be. That's the way it goes. Johnny V's in Bullets. Artie. John Ventimiglia as Artie Bucco. <laughs> And then quite possibly the most popular soprano, <laughs> Tony Sirico, <laughs> AKA Pauly Walnuts. <laughs> Sirico's got the biggest part of all the sopranos and bullets. <laughs> as a loyal soldier to his 1920s New York crime family. Much of the timelessness for Sopranos lies in its use of humor. It's not often we get so much humor in a dark world of ruthless criminals. But Sopranos pulled it off in spades. And while Bullets is a full-on comedy, Be silent. Don't speak. it remains a masterclass in the use of top-notch performance to portray funny shit. Get some new lines or I'll mail your kneecaps to the dance floor. While simultaneously whacking a guy. I quit. And now. For the granddaddy of all gangster movies with Sopranos, we got 12 motherfucking Sopranos. I gotta admit the truth, it turned me on. No surprise. What? No. It's fucking good, fellas. It's Martin Scorsese. It's 1990. And like Sopranos changing TV forever, it's HB. Oh. Thank you, sir. Oh, modern filmmaking is about to change forever. Look, what else can be said on one of the most quoted movies of all time? As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. It was out of respect. The most fun, the most violent. Well, one thing we can add to the conversation is how many fucking Sopranos there are. So we'll start with our six returning family members, <laughs> and then we'll hit the six new guys. Returning, we got the three Tonys. We got Sirico, <laughs> Tony Lip, and Tony Darrow. Beansy's back, this time with some blow. You wanna see helicopters? Correction, a lot of fucking blow. Big Puss reappears with a bunch of coats from what I can only assume is a perfectly legitimate source. Fuck you, pay me. And before we get to our new guys, it's Billy fucking Bats. Frank Vincent, an ironic name too, given all the batting he does just five years later in Scorsese's own Casino. From smallest to biggest, in our last six, we got John Cha Cha Charchi from New York. Motherfucking mother! you Joanne, right? Who are you? We're uh, from Alcoholics Anonymous. What's your name? Well, we're anonymous. We got our mother of the year with Marianne Leone as Joanne Moltisanti, Christopher's mother. It's a guy's mother, Phil. It's a guy's mother. But we do share some cultural ideas. Religious, culinary, matriarchal. In prison, dinner was always a big thing. Johnny Deal did the meat. And from the other side of the law, it's Bureau Chief of Organized Crime in Newark, Agent Frank Cubitoso of the FBI. Paulie did the prep work, and he used to slice it so thin that it used to liquefy in the pan with just a little oil. It's a very good system. He didn't call? Speaking of the importance of mothers... Oi, don't start, mom! We got Suzanne Shepard as two moms, both Carmela's in Sopranos and Karen's in Goodfellas. He's not Jewish! Did you know how these people live? Out of this, the man hasn't been able to digest a decent meal in six weeks. You shut my foot! It happens. All right, so here we go with our two finalists. Get out of my life. Get out! Get out of my life! We got Karen and Spider as Melfi and Chrissy. Before she was Dr. Jennifer Melfi. How do you feel about the fact that your own mother would have testified against you? Lorraine Bracco was Karen Hill. You don't know how I feel! 
And fun fact, initially, Sopranos Godfather slash showrunner David Chase wanted Lorraine Bracco for Edie Falco's part as Carmella. Not TV. It's not that simple. But after receiving a million post-Goodfellow scripts as the main mob wife, by the mid to late 90s, Bracco was done with that role. No. no stop with that. No. So she insisted on playing Melfi, and to say the least, Dr. Melfi was fucking right. Sorry I'm late, the alarm was. <clears throat> Sorry I'm fucking late. And finally, next to Bracco, the most recognizable, the most memorable, good fella of them all. It's Michael Imperioli. Some spider spider, I spider, thought I thought spider. Christopher. I'm sorry, T. Shut the I fuck up and listen to me. Certainly a complicated character, if not one of the most complicated on the show. But at the end of the day, as many flaws as he had, it's still a gangster show. What is it? Do I look like a pussy to you? Chris, you're in the mafia. You probably don't even hear it when it happens, right? What's the world coming to?